All right, still in Article 404, talking about switches, our next change is in 404.2, which talks about where you need a neutral conductor at switch locations. Let's take a peek and see what they did here for the 2023. Okay, so 404.2 connections. The rule for providing a neutral conductor at switch locations was increased. All right, so this came into the code several code cycles ago, I think in 20. 17, maybe 2014, probably 2014 actually. And the rule says, look, for luminaires that serve bathrooms, hallways, stairways, habitable rooms, or occupiable spaces, their neutral conductor must be installed at the switch box. Obviously, most switches do not require a neutral to function. I mean, a switch just takes a conductor and breaks it back and forth. So you don't need a neutral. However, uh, it, it's 2023. It's not 1923. <laughs> you know, the switches that we're using today are not the switches that our great grandparents used to use. So, do we need a neutral at our switch locations? Well, for some switches, the answer is yes. If you have a, an electronic dimmer, or particularly if you have an occupancy sensor, then yeah, those switches often require a neutral to do their job. Now, think about an occupancy sensor for a little bit. Um, some some electronic dimmers need a neutral, but occupancy sensors, I think it's a little bit easier to wrap your head around. If you think of an occupancy sensor, when you walk past it, it is always watching for you, right? So if it's always working, then there has to be a completed circuit. So if all you have is a hot and a switch leg going down and coming back from the switch, no neutral, how does that occupancy sensor work with only one conductor? with only a hot? Well, the answer is it was using the equipment grounding conductor as the neutral conductor. I mean, you have to have a return path, right, for electricity to flow. So for years, they were using the equipment ground as the neutral. Now, that neutral didn't have enough current on it to really do much of anything other than potentially surprise a person if they got shocked by it. I mean, really, we, we shouldn't be putting current on the equipment grounding conductor. When you touch the equipment grounding conductor, uh, you're supposed to be safe. There's not supposed to be a voltage on it, and it's not supposed to be carrying current. Now, again, there's such little current that it wasn't going to kill anybody. But it was enough to surprise somebody, and that could, you know, result in a mishap that could, you know, be problematic. So a few code cycles ago, like I said, back in 2014, I think, maybe even 2011, they added this rule that said, listen, you got to bring the neutral to your switch location. And that way, if we have an electronic dimmer or an occupancy sensor, it'll have an actual neutral instead of the equipment grounding conductor. So that's what the rule says. But there were basically five exceptions. And the one exception was so broad that it almost removed the requirement in, I don't know, 90% of the cases. And if you have a rule that has an exception that applies 90% of the time, do you really even have a rule or is it worth having? So they revised it here to say, okay, Luminaires, again, the serve bathrooms, hallways, stairways, habitable rooms, or occupiable spaces, their neutral conductor must be installed at the switch box. Fine, no problem. The, the key change here is that it now applies to unfinished spaces and finished spaces as well. So there was an exception, and, and it wasn't listed as an exception. I think it was item number one that said, listen, if you have, uh, if you have a way that you can replace a cable. So if you've just got a two wire cable with the hot and the switch leg, if you had a way to easily access that cable to remove that two conductor cable and replace it with a three conductor cable without damaging the finish of the building, well then you could just replace the cable later down the road. So here in the photograph, we've got an unfinished basement. The switches in that entire basement none of them needed a neutral conductor. So you could just run two conductor cable, hot down, switch leg back, re-identify the light, and you were done. <sighs> Give me a break. As soon as somebody had to finish the basement, then of course they would have to replace all those cables. They're not gonna be doing that. But to, to even make it a little bit more ridiculous, let's say the house here in the photograph is a typical rambler, right? A, a one-story house with a basement below and an attic above. <sighs> 
usually you didn't have to have a neutral to any switches in that entire house because <laughs> you could go up in the attic and replace a two-wire cable with a three-wire cable. Or you could go down into the unfinished basement and fish a new cable up the wall up into the kitchen or the bathroom or wherever. Now, nobody was going to do that. That is a tremendous amount of work for very little gain, and I, I just I don't think electricians were really doing it. But we had the exception that said, yeah, you can do it if you want to. Or if you had a uh, if you had a suspended ceiling, you know, in commercial. Same thing. If you drop down a 12-2 MC cable, white down for the hot, tape it up, black back for the uh, you know, for the switch leg, you were done. Because then if you ever wanted to replace that with an occupancy sensor, you could rip out the 12-2, replace it with a 12-3 without damaging the drywall. Again, give me a break. Nobody is going to go through all of that effort. They're just going to put the switch in, use the equipment ground as the neutral, and we're faced with the same problem that we tried to fix. So now in the 2023 code, that option's gone. So it just says, listen, you need to have a neutral at your switch location. Now we still have the same rather strange language here for three ways and four ways that say that says if multiple switches control an area's lighting, only one switch box requires the neutral if the entire area is visible from one switch or the combined switch location. So here in the photograph, I've got a hallway that's got a three-way, four-way, three-way. And what this is saying is, look, as long as you can see, as long as you can see the switch, one of the switches from anywhere in the room, basically, then you don't need to have a neutral at all of the switches, just one. The idea being that you're only going to have a dimmer at one of those switches and not all three. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the idea behind the allowance is you're not going to put in dimmer, dimmer, dimmer. You're just going to do one, one can dim, the other two just control. We still have the same exceptions that used to be one through five and are now one through four. And item one is if the switch box is supplied by a raceway that has enough free space in it that you could add a neutral later on, then you don't have to have a neutral upon installation. You can just push one in at a later date if you need one. So there you go. If you're piping the building, just like the one here in the photograph, you don't need to have a neutral. You can push one in if you decide you want one later on. Item two. Snap switches with integral enclosures do not need to have a neutral at their switch location. Now, this actually makes a lot of sense. What you're looking at here in the photograph, if you're not familiar with it, is the switch with integral enclosure. All right, so that switch and the enclosure that it's in is all one unit, okay? This is something that you would find in manufactured houses or mobile, or, uh, mobile homes. So when you take the switch out, the switch and the box is all one unit. You can't possibly remove that switch and replace it with a dimmer or an occupancy sensor because the whole thing is one unit. So there's no sense in running a neutral to a, to a location where you couldn't just change the switch to an occupancy sensor. So you still have that allowance. Item three. If the lighting is controlled by automatic means, you don't do it. You don't need to do it. And then item four, if the switch controls a receptacle, you also don't need a neutral. It's probably not very likely that you're going to have a dimmer on a receptacle. Certainly not a good idea. In fact, it's not allowed. Uh, but, you know, it, it seems like a nice idea to be able to dim the receptacle that you plug your lamp into. Well, until you don't plug your lamp in it and you plug in your TV and you dim your TV and it doesn't undim. So we don't want to put a dimmer switch on a receptacle. So there's no reason to run that neutral to the switch when we're never going to be putting in a dimmer or an electronic occupancy sensor. The neutral conductor must be installed, however, if the switch requires a line to neutral voltage to operate its electronic components while in standby mode. This is the whole reason we're doing this to begin with, is that you have, you know, electronics that need a neutral. So what this statement is saying is, listen, even if you comply with one of those items in one, two, three, or four, if you're installing a neutral, a switch that needs a neutral, well, then you need to install a neutral. 
So that's what this last statement is saying. And then lastly, we still have the exception that says, look, this does not apply to replacement switches. So look, my, my house was built in 1999. It probably doesn't have a neutral at all of the switch locations. So what am I to do if I go up to my house and I want to replace my switch with a switch that would normally need a neutral? Well, the rule we just read would tell you that you need to run a neutral to it. The exception gets you out of it. The exception says, look, this requirement does not apply to replacement switches in locations that do not have a neutral if installing the neutral would require removing the building's finished materials. All right, look, we're not going to make you remodel your house to change out one of your switches to an occupancy center. That's obviously not realistic. So this is saying, yeah, for replacements, you don't need to add a neutral there if that would require damaging the building's finish. Now, there's also some more language in this exception, and you'll want to read the actual language in the code that says if you're doing this, then the maximum number of, of replacement switches without a neutral is five per circuit. Because again, each one of those does not put very much current on the equipment ground. But five of them cumulatively would put a decent amount on the equipment ground and conductor. So we're going to limit it to five of these replacements per branch circuit, 25 per feeder circuit. All right, so there you go, 404.2. Odds are you were probably already installing a neutral to most switch locations. This is one of those rules that when it came out, we just kind of all agreed that the, the days of doing a dead end three way were in the rear view mirror. But if you were taking advantage of item one that used to allow you to do that, well, that allowance is now gone. So there you have it. See you guys on the next video.